The end of the world, for many of us, is overwhelming. Something we hope is far off in the horizon, beyond the scope of our lives. For others, the end may be more concrete. A growing fear that a catastrophic event, perhaps a nuclear war, that would make the planet uninhabitable. In the hopes of a saviour, many have come as messengers of light only to lead people into spiritual darkness. As we move into the 21st century, false prophets, false messiahs, false religions have exploded in our society. There are numerous cult groups that have millions of followers. We start our journey by finding out why is everybody waiting for a savior, a messiah, where it all begun. What are the signs of his coming? We have to understand what is Messiahism. Messianism is the belief in a Messiah, a Redeemer, a Savior. Messiah is originated from the Arabic word Masaha Yemsahu, which basically means the blessed touch of a prophet, a revolutionary prophet. It also originates from the Arabic word Saha Yasuh, which means spreading, the spread of the pure teachings all around the world. Although almost all our major religions are awaiting the coming of the Messiah, for a long time mankind has been prolonging the return of the Messiah because his advent would mean the end of time. Traditional and Orthodox Jews have mainly held the thought that the Messiah would be an anointed one, a descendant from his father through the David line, who will gather the Jews back into the land of Israel and usher in an era of peace. In Christianity, the second coming is the anticipated return of Jesus from the heavens to the earth, an event that will fulfill aspects of Messiahic prophecies, such as the general resurrection of the dead, the last judgment of the dead and the living, and the establishment of the kingdom of God. In Islam, the Mahdi, or the Guided One, is the prophesied Redeemer, who will stay on earth seven, nine, or nineteen years before the coming of the day of the resurrection. Muslims believe the Mahdi will rid the world of error, injustice, and tyranny alongside Jesus. In the Buddhist tradition, a matriarch is to appear on earth who will achieve complete enlightenment and teach the pure Dharma. In Hinduism, Kalki is the tenth and final great incarnation of Vishnu, who will come to end the present age of darkness and destruction, known as Kali Yuga. The concept of a Messiah 
and the advent of a Messiah, how the advent will be realized, how it will take place, is a very important feature in all the religions. What are the signs of a Messiah's advent? The coming of the Messiah is the hope of believers that God is in control of all things and is faithful to the promises and prophecies in his word. In the book of Matthew, Jesus says, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ and will deceive many. In the Bible, Matthew states, You will hear of wars and rumours of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. In the book of Luke, it states, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilence in various places and fearful events and great signs from heaven. It is important to understand these prophecies. These prophecies are not used in a literal manner, but they are used in a metaphorical, allegorical manner. In the Judaism, in the Old Testament, we can read in the book of Daniel, the awaited Messiah. The prophecy of God in the book of Daniel speaks that after 2300 days the temple will be cleansed. The day which is used in the Old Testament represents a year which means 2300 days is 2300 years. After the prophecy starts from the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. If we count from this date and we add 2,300 years, we will come to the conclusion that it is 1843. It means the Christian learned scholars were waiting for the Messiah in the 19th century. And when the mountains are made to move, and when the she-camels, ten months with young, are abandoned, and when the beasts are brought together, and when the people are brought together, we have just seen what the Holy Quran says about the end of time. Judging from the verses, the end does not seem far. In Hinduism, we find the concept of a world reformer. Two kind of concepts. The concept of the world reformer who will come with law. And the second coming of Krishna, we also find it in the Gita. It is said, after dharma, there will be the adharma, which will, means that after peace, there will be irreligious immorality all over the world. With the end of time comes a savior, a redeemer, a messiah. The question is, where is he? According to the New Testament, Jesus was raised from the dead by God on the third day following his crucifixion and appeared to his disciples. Forty days later, he ascended bodily into heaven and retains since then both of his natures, divine and human. Jesus presently exercises all authority in heaven and on earth. Most Christians believe that Jesus will return from heaven at the end of the age to judge the living and the dead 
and fulfill the rest of Messiah prophecies. Traditional Muslims believe that Jesus will return at a time close to the end of the world. The Quranic verse they allude to as an indicator to Jesus' future return is, and Jesus shall be a sign of the hour. Therefore, have no doubt about the hour, but follow ye me. This is a straight way. According to Islamic tradition, Jesus' descent will be in the midst of wars fought by the Mahdi, the rightly guided one. He will be against the Antichrist and his followers. Jesus will descend at the point of the White Arcade, east of Damascus, dressed in yellow robes, his head anointed. He will then join the Mahdi in his war against the Antichrist. Jesus will abide by the Islamic teachings, slaying the Antichrist, and then everyone from the people of the book, Jews and Christians, will believe in him. Thus, there will be one community, that of Islam. Since all the major religions are awaiting the advent of a Messiah. Who would judge the appointment of someone as the true Messiah? Is it the Jews, the Christians, or the Muslims? Most importantly, why is there a need for a Messiah, a Saviour, a Redeemer, most religions agree on an ultimate, powerful authority. Religions concur that human beings were created to serve humanity as to manifestation of God's attributes and to illustrate and practice divine traits in their lives. This provides the roadmap for religious practices. In order to achieve the object. Religions trace their origins to a founder and a bearer of God's message. Most of these teachings have been communicated to succeeding generations through oral traditions and translations which are subsequently explained and amplified by later prophets. Each major religion also believes in the second coming of their founder to reinvigorate its true message before the end of time. Followers of several religions claim that their founders have ascended to heavens and await their second coming. If we look at uh, those jobs and the duties which the Jesus Christ has performed during his second coming, we clearly mention and we clearly find that the Holy Prophet وسلم, has mentioned quite a few things. He has mentioned that he would be breaking the cross, secondly he would be killing the swine and thirdly he would be fighting with the Jal or the Antichrist. His first task is to establish the pure unity of God on earth, free from all polytheistic traits and ideas. His second task is to strengthen the relationship between man and his creator. The third task is to put faith in the human being, in the believers, by demonstrating the earthly and heavenly powers. Assuming the end of the world will occur at a common time for all people, it would be reasonable to assume the second coming for all religions 
would occur at the same time. Adherents of each religion will acknowledge the second coming. The conclusion has to be emphasized that the Messiah has already appeared. We can draw no other conclusion from the Bible, nor from the Quran, nor from any other scripture. We only know from this that the Messiah has already appeared. Thus the mystery about each religious Messiah descending from the heavens to proclaim victory and lead their followers to salvation is merely a myth. Earlier religions, the scope of which were regional and were meant for specific and updated and superseded by Islam, a message which not only authenticates them, but upholds their prophet's righteousness. Hence, it's logical to conclude that only one comprehensive Messiah is required. This is the only way to satisfy the goal of religion, to promote brotherhood, to coincide to create peace. God sent the same message to different people at different times. Actually makes more sense. In that case, a final universal message to upgrade and blend earlier messages into one would be consistent with the unity of purpose that all religions profess. Therefore, the second coming all leaders should coincide into one personality who would usher in an era of peace. His message will prevail not by the use of force but by compassion, logic and reasoning. Muslims believe that the Old and New Testament foretells the advent of a new universal law which would last until the end of time. The Holy Quran happens to be that new law which fulfills the prophecies of all earlier scriptures revealed through Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, addresses all mankind and delivers an unequivocal message of peace, universal brotherhood, absolute justice and equality. The Holy Quran has the unique distinction of acknowledging the truthfulness of all past religions. It affirms the innumerable prophets have been sent to all people at different times with the same universal message of God's unity. Comprehensive teachings when they were intellectually capable of appreciating it. In the Islam, there is also, also the concept of the awaiting Messiah. We can read in the Ahadith, the sayings of the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. He says in a Hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, the most important compilation of the sayings of the Ahadith. He says, by him in whose hand my life, my soul is. The Messiah will soon appear among you. He will break the cross. He will kill the swine. He will abolish the war. The Muslims are bitterly divided and in utter spiritual chaos, frantically awaiting the Messiah to guide them out of this morass. They must resolve their intellectual differences to fully understand their faith. It is easy to comprehend that there can only be one correct interpretation of the Quran and it will be the Messiah's role to provide that. This is exactly what Jesus did for the Jews. He reinterpreted and restored the Mosaic law, the original essence 
but which had been lost and reduced to myth and dogma. The role of the Messiah in all faiths has to be the same. It's a universal fact. Whenever a spiritual darkness falls over the earth, the piety vanishes from the hearts of the people. God sends his messengers to guide the people back to the right path. Holy scriptures of major religions are replete with signs such messengers have appeared and have established the kingdom of God. The signs and times given in all religious books have striking resemblance in their essence. It was predicted by the Holy Prophet of Islam that at the advent of the promised Messiah, Muslims would be suffering from weakness, division from other nations, a general decline in moral values would produce an increase in immorality. Women's dress would become flimsy and give exposure. A kind of transport would replace camels. It would run with fire and people would sit inside it. Earthquakes, famine and epidemics would break out and destroy large numbers of people. Solar and lunar eclipse would both occur together on Pacific dates of Ramadan. The promised Messiah would appear in the beginning of the 14th century of Hydra. Jesus explained in the Gospels very clear how to distinguish the false claimant from the true one. How he explained it is wonderful. He said, as the lightning shines forth from the east unto to the west, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. Then he explained about the eclipse of the sun and the moon. He mentioned that the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its lights, the stars, which is metaphorically used for the religious scholars and clerics will fall down and the fundaments of the heavens will be shaken. The biblical prophecies regarding the reappearance of Christ in the 19th century are so clear and so numerous that hundreds of Christian scholars of that time expected the immediate appearance of Christ. Many went so far as to precisely predict when he was to return, concluding that all the signs of those days, preparing for the fulfillment of the prophecy of the second coming of the Christ. Christ is at our door. In the same time frame, in the year 1882, in a remote village of India, a humble man of God received the following revelation regarding his appointment as a divine reformer through the following words. Proclaim, I have been commissioned. I am the first of the believers. It is very interesting that the Holy Prophet وسلم, when he made the prophecy that in the latter days, in the period of latter days, Jesus Christ will come. Uh, he also used the same language which was used by Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself. Because it is well known that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was very fond of using uh, parables and speak in metaphorical language. The same style was used by the Holy Prophet when his second advent of Jesus Christ was foretold. The same style was adopted by the Holy Prophet when he mentioned about the second coming of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. First of all, we see 
that the name Isa ibn Maryam, that Jesus son of Mary, was exactly used to indicate that the person who would come in his name and in his spirit and representing the second advent would be very much similar to the first one. But also, physically speaking, he would be a different person. Because for those people who have been waiting that exactly the same person has to come, there is another clear indication in the saying of the Holy Prophet وسلم, where he has mentioned that the two messiahs, the one who was 2000 years ago and the one who was to come representing the second advent, they are two different people because their features, their appearance, their shape and form is going to be very clearly distinct. And the Holy Prophet وسلم, has mentioned regarding Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, that he was of a very fair and white complexion with some reddish uh, element in it. So his face was very red and white and very fair complexion and the hair were curly. And, regard, and regarding the second person who was going to represent the second advent of Jesus Christ, he has been clearly described as a man of whitish color and with long hair. So that also indicates that not the same person has to come for the second time, but somebody else has to come. The coming of such a person was no ordinary event. Prophecies and signs mentioned in the holy books of different faiths were fulfilled by the advent of the promised Messiah. Born in 1835 in a small village of Kardian in Punjab, India. He claimed to be the promised Messiah and Mahdi on the basis of divine revelations descended upon him. He claimed that he fulfilled in his person the prophecies of all the world faiths. Hazrat Mizra Ghulam Ahmed founded the Ahmadiyya Muslim community in 1889, Islam being the complete and perfect code of life for all mankind. He taught the Holy Prophet of Islam, Muhammad, was the final law-bearing prophet of God. The promised reformer, as a renewer within Islam, was to be follower, believer, a subordinate to the Holy Prophet of Islam. A devout Muslim championed the cause of Islam at the time when there was little understanding of true Islamic values even amongst Muslims. Islam at its lowest ebb, politically, socially, morally and spiritually. He revived the faith in one God, in the prophethood of Muhammad, and he established devoted and enthused community of Muslims who practice Islam in its true essence. The founder of the community again, he invited the people and uh, to the message of Islam and told them how they should reform their lives and practically by founding the community of the righteous people who completely abstained from these things if they had ever been doing like anything like that and also inviting other people to understand the same point he actually created a community of the pious people and that community is like something uh, which is all the time expanding the community in the beginning, when he started it on 23rd of March 1889, there were only 40 people on that very first day when the community started. But later on more and more people started coming. And now uh, we can mention they are in uh, millions and in almost 195 countries they are spread. So this is a, to, to indicate that a community of the righteous and pious people has already been established. It is evident from the signs which have been revealed and the stories which we heard that the Messiah should have appeared and the end is near. It is a divine law that God does not grant respite to a false prophet. The Torah 
affirms that false prophets shall be slain and the gospel sets out that an imposter would soon perish and his followers would be scattered. Such a one is soon seized and suffers his punishment. True prophets have been honored and accepted and their claims have been established and their religion became widespread and flourished over a long time. Followers believe that God sent Ahmed, like Jesus, to end religious wars, condemn bloodshed, and reinstituted morality, justice, and peace. Ahmed's advent has brought about an unprecedented era of Islamic revival. He divested Islam of fanatical beliefs and practices by vigorously championing Islam's true and essential teachings. He also recognized the noble teachings of the great religious founders and saints, including Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Krishna, Buddha, Confucius, and Guru Nanak, and explained how such teachings converged into the one true Islam. Today, after being founded 120 years ago, the Ahmadiyya Muslims community is a dynamic, fast-growing, international revival movement within Islam. It spans over 195 countries, with membership exceeding tens of millions. Its current headquarters are in the United Kingdom. The followers of the Promised Messiah in the Ahmadiyya community count themselves truly fortunate and blessed to have been able to have knowledge and accept this great bounty of God. There are many out there anxiously awaiting and desperately searching for the reformer promised by God. जब करते हो गर मैं आ गया हो कर मसे क्यों अजब करते हो गर मैं आ गया हो कर मसे खुद मसीहाई कदम भरती है ये बादे बहार क्यों अजब करते हो गर मैं आ गया हो कर मसे क्यों अजब करते हो गर मैं आ गया हो कर मसी